Okay, so we are starting indicator 11.1 or 11 day one, however you want to do it. Um, so if you're at home, you should have your three ring binder out and you should be taking notes along with us. And then we will have a, uh, since I didn't do it when we did the mod test, because I forgot, we will do a note check um, on Thursday when you come back from e-learning. So make sure tomorrow for e-learning you watch the video. I will be checking last e-learning's notes and tomorrow's e-learning notes, both tomorrow for the grade. Okay, so it'll be a, a bigger note check when we get back on Thursday. Um, so today we are doing 11.1 .1 or 11 day one, and we're totally switching gears as far as some terminology. So I want to give you all a minute to get this right here written down in your notes. You will need these three definitions, and we will reference these a bunch. Okay, so for the terminology, um, a relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So you guys actually, when you were doing your T-charts, when we were doing absolute value, and you were doing the T-charts and picking the 5X values and then running it through the equation and getting the Ys and filling in that T-chart, you were creating a relation, okay? That was a set of ordered pairs that when you graph them on, the, on a coordinate plane, right, they, they create some sort of graph. Um, they can be in a table, which we're going to look at. They can be in, I call those fancy brackets. I'm sure there's some technical name for them, but um, they can be denoted by having those fancy brackets around them, or they can be in a diagram. And we're going to look at all three of those today and, and look at the different ways that you can be given a, a relation or a set of ordered pairs. <clears throat> ordered pair is, of course, an X and a Y. And they're a point, an X and a Y, when they're given to you as an ordered pair, they are a position on a graph. On a coordinate plane, they're a point or a, a, a data point on a coordinate plane. So when you have a function, it means that it's an equation that every X is associated with exactly one Y. And that will make a whole lot more sense, I promise you, in about 15 minutes when we're done with our lecture today. Um, and that also means, we've talked about this before, where remember when I used the Hershey Kiss factory analogy and I said you've got a function or an equation and you that's your machines and you've got ingredients, which are your X's, and when you pour the ingredients into the function or you plug the X's into the equation, out pops the Y, right? Or it produces the Hershey Kiss at the end of the factory. So for a function, it has to be a function so that if you plug in an X, only one Y pops out, okay? So 
Uh, again, it'll make a whole lot more sense here in a few minutes when we actually look at some real examples. I just wanted you to get the definitions down first, okay? And then also, f of x is just a fancy way to write y. And we've talked about that before. So um, up on the board, uh, it says y equals, and it's got a couple of, of equations up there. Let's say we did y equals 2x plus 3. You could also write f of x equals 2x plus 3. And it's just a fancy way of writing y. Because what f of x means is x just tells you what your ingredients are. So you plug your ingredients into, that's your input, into the equation. And then your output or out pops the y. Okay? All right. So everybody, does everybody have that down? I'm going to open this with Cami so we can actually see a few of these and it'll make a whole lot more sense once we do that. Borden? Yeah, is it okay if she finishes notes for about 15 minutes? Oh, okay, thanks. Kinsley, whenever we're done with notes, you can go down to Mr. Listman. Okay, so, whoops, popped ahead of me. All right, so, We've got our definitions out of the way, so now we're going to look at in, in application. So first of all, we have to determine when we have either a graph or a relation, right, which is a set of points, we have to determine if they are a function or not. Because not every equation is a function, okay, if that makes sense. You can have equations where they don't meet that whole x and 1, y thing, and in those instances, they would not be a function. So you have to be able to have a way to determine whether or not your graph or your set of ordered pairs, your relation, you have to be able to have a way to tell whether or not it's a function or not. There's two ways to do it. The first is this vertical line test. So you'll want to put that in your notes first. This is how to determine if a relation is a function. The first way is a vertical line test. A vertical line test only works if you have a graph you can actually see. So here are three examples of graphs that we can actually see the shape that the graph makes, right? So when I say graph, I don't mean the x and the y axis, okay? That's your coordinate plane. When I say graph, and I'll do it here just in red just to kind of make it stand out, I'm talking about this right here, right? This right here is what I mean by the graph. It's the shape that is put on the coordinate plane based on points that you that you plot based on an equation okay so let me erase that now so the way the first way you can tell whether or not it's a function is if it's a graph you can actually see you do it what's called a vertical line test vertical lines go up and down what the vertical line test is is, and there's, there's an example of one vertical line there, but I'll show you, you need to do it through the whole graph. So what you do is you start on the left-hand side of your graph, and you basically visualize, or you can use your pencil or a ruler or your finger or whatever you have that's a straight line, but you visualize a bunch of up and down vertical lines all the way through your graph, okay? These are called vertical lines. And the test is, is that your graph, which I'll do it kind of in darker blue here. This is your graph, right? Does the graph touch any one of those vertical lines more than once? So if you look at this first vertical line right here, look and see where your graph touches that vertical line, because this keeps going this way forever. It only touches right there, right? The next vertical line, it only touches right there. The next one, only there, only there, only there, right? I'm just, I'm putting a point where my line touches or where my graph touches all my vertical lines. Is there any time that my blue line circles back and touches one of my vertical lines twice? Okay, the answer is no, which means it passes the vertical line test and so it is a function. That would be a yes, it is a function. Now I'm going to erase all those so we can get back to the original. 
So you can see here that you should be able, you shouldn't have to draw all those lines on there. I just did it to show you. But you should be able to visually look at that graph and see that there's no place where your line or your graph doubles back and loops over and crosses over itself. If you look at that middle example, you can see right away the, the vertical line that they have drawn there. You can see that it intersects the graph right here and right here, right? So it fails the vertical line test because there is a place, actually there's several places, there is a place on this graph where it fails the vertical line test or it hits that vertical line twice, okay? And if this was marked out in, if, there, if it had numbers, we would call that probably what? One, two, three, four. So the place where it failed the vertical line test could be x equals four. Because if I ask you to identify the coordinate of this line, the x value would be 4, right? And then the y value, whoops, I wrote x, not 4. The x value would be 4. What would the y value be down there? Would you say 3? Can we guess at 3? So if I was to name that point, that point would be 4, negative 3. And if I was to name this point, well, the x value is also 4 and then it's positive three. So the x at four has more than one y. It has a negative three and a positive three. And so if you think back to our definition, it's only a function if every x only has one y. Well, x of four has two y's. So it fails that test, right? It fails the vertical line test. Now, is the only place it fails that test at four? Let me erase this. This one, and it only takes one failure, right? You don't have to have a bunch. It only takes one failure to fail. So this would not be a function, but you could say it was not a function at x is 0, right? At x is 1, at x is 2, at x is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, for on and on forever and ever. It fails every single time because every single time you try to draw a vertical line, it hits and it hits, right? Draw a, vertical, draw, a, draw a vertical line, it hits and it hits. Okay, make sense? That third example is another example where it's not a function and it is not a function because if you look at the yellowish line that they have drawn for their vertical line test, it is definitely obvious that it hits here and here. And so that x value, which looks about x is 4 again, there is, there's a multiple, there's multiple times that it fails, right? It fails every single time you draw a vertical line, it fails because your vertical line goes through your graph twice in every one of those spots. So that would not be a function. Now, when you're asked to identify why it's not a function, you do not have to name them all. You just have to name one spot where it doesn't meet or doesn't pass the vertical line test or draw a dashed line to show me why it doesn't pass the vertical line test, okay? So that is one way that you can tell whether or not something is a function. This only works if you have a graph that you can actually see. The other way, love it when that happens. The other way is no, called no repeating X's. That's our second test. Get that written down in your notes. This is your, this is your second test. Your first test was the vertical line test. That only works when you have a graph. The no repeating X test, I also like to call this the no cheating X. All right, so I'm going to give you a minute, and I want you to copy down these two graph or these two tables the one that says function and not function.
Okay, so the one on the left is a function. Here's why. If you look at all of your x values, which every single one of these is an x value, right? These are all ordered pairs. The first pair is negative 3, 6, then 0, 8, 3, 20. Okay, those are ordered pairs. There's an x and a y. But if you just look at your x's, are there any that repeat? You've got negative 3, 0, 3, 8, and negative 10. There's no repeating x. So that means that yes, it is a function. And you would just write yes underneath there. In the other example, under not a function, okay, you look at your x's and you've got negative 2, 0, negative 2. You don't even have to go any further and look at the rest because it only takes one offending x to make it not a function. So when you find one, you can stop. So negative 2 and negative 2, that's a repeating x. That means that no, it's not a function, and the reason it's not a function is because x equals negative 2. So if it is a function, you just have to write yes. If it's not a function, you have to write no, and then you have to tell me what's the offending x. Okay? And again, if you think back to your definition, the x can only have one y, and the x of negative 2, it has two y's. It has a y of 6 and a y of 20. Okay? Can't have that. All right, you don't have to write this example down in your notes because this is just another example of a table. It's just this is an up and down table rather than a side to side table, but it's still a list of x and y coordinates. Again, you're going to look just at your x's. The x's are all that matter. Your y's can do whatever they want, but your x's cannot repeat. So if you look at your x's here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Are there any repeating x's? There are not, so it is a function. If you look at this one, you've got one, two, one. I can stop right there. I've already found my offender. There's my x. That's the one that repeats. So no, it's not a function, and it's not a function because of x equals 1. Okay? The other way you might be given uh, a, a graph, or a, I'm sorry, a relation, is in what's called a diagram. And you will want to put these in your notes because you probably haven't seen this before. So go ahead and copy these two separate diagrams. One is a function and one is not, and we'll talk about why. Sure you, when you draw this, make sure you draw the connecting lines because they matter. All right, what these what this diagram means is these are your x's. Your x's are always on the left, right? These are your x's and these are your y's, just like in a table, the x's come first. And what this means, the lines drawn, the reason I said the lines are so important is because they tell you which x goes with which y. So if I was to write out this relation, I would say that the x of negative three goes with the three, right? You follow the line and you see that the negative 3 goes with the 3. Then you would see that the negative 2 goes with the negative 6, right? Negative 2 goes with the negative 6. Now, you do not have to write out the points at the bottom. I'm just doing this to show you how to read these diagrams, okay? Um, the negative 1 goes with the 0, the 0 goes with the 15, and the 1 goes with the negative 1. So that's how you know which x goes with which y. So once you've done that, I'm just going to erase that so it's not in our way. Once you know how to read these, now we can look at the lines and we can see, do we have any repeating x's? Does any one of these x's go out to two different y's, right? And this is kind of why I jokingly call it the cheating x. Looking at just your x column, 
are any of these X's going out with two at once? What do you guys think? No. So then this would be a function. Okay, it passes the repeating X test. Whereas the second example, right, it's not a function. Who's our offender? Yeah, this is our cheating X right here. Because that X is going out to the 0 and it's going out to the 15. So X equals 1 is our offender or our why it fails the test. The last way that you're going to be given this information is in a relation using those fancy brackets I was talking about, where you do a fancy bracket and then you list all the ordered pairs and then you close it with a fancy bracket and that means that those points are a relation and you can tell whether or not it's a function the same way. You just look at your X's. So if I look at this top one, this we, we'll call this number one, when I look at number one, and I look at my X's. I have a 1, an 8, a 3, a 1, and a 6. Do I have a repeating X? Yes. So that means it fails the test. It's not a function. And what's my offending X? 1. Because right there, you've got X of 1 and X of 1 going out with two different Y's. Doesn't work. Cheating X's. That's why they're your X's, right? <laughs> All right, look at the second example here. Okay, let's look at our x's. 0, 3, negative 3, 2. Is it a function or is it not? What do you guys think? Yes, it's a function. No repeaters, no cheaters. We're good. All right. For this next part, you do not have to write any of these down in your notes, okay? So I just want everybody to be looking up at the screen, and we're going to go around the room, and we're going to do these together, okay? Am I good to scroll past this? Okay. thought I saw some pencil still going, so I'll wait a sec. All right, so let's just do these together. All right, I want you to tell me yes or no, and if it's no, I want you to tell me why. Andrew, is number one a function? Good. It is a function, right? It's a graph, so you use the vertical line test. It's important. He's a liar. Tell him video or it didn't happen. <laughs> Ah, okay, I see. Okay, I do have her. Can you wait about mm, three minutes? Okay, I'll send her right down. Bye. As soon as we're done. Okay, it'll just be another minute. All right, so number one, it is a function because it's a graph, and so you should look at it and see, does it pass your vertical line test? It does because every time, every place that you could draw a vertical line, right, it only passes there, there, and there. It never loops back around and hits one of your vertical lines a second time. So it passes the test. Um, Braden, how about number two? Is it a function, yes or no? What do you say? Okay, tell me where, it, what's your offender? Where does, it, where does it fail? So if I draw a line at three, that's okay. If I draw a bunch of vertical lines here, is there ever a failing point? So does it pass the vertical line test? Okay, so then yes, it's a function. Okay. Um, number three. Uh, let's see. Brooklyn, how about number three? Does it pass or not? Is it a function? Yes, it is a function. Okay, it passes the vertical line test. Everywhere you draw a vertical line, we're good. It only hits it once. All right. Lexi, how about number four? No. Tell me where it fails. Just one spot. Three. All right, I'm glad you said that. 
Does it fail at three? This was actually what we were going to talk about, so that was perfect. What does open circle mean? Open circle means it doesn't actually touch three. So three can't be a failing point because it's an open circle. If they had been closed circles, it would have been three. So tell me another spot where it fails. One. Good. One at, at the vertical line of X is one, right, which is right there, it fails because it hits boom and boom. Okay. How about um, imitate number five? Function or no? Okay, so if I draw a vertical line, do I ever have a spot where it hits twice? Okay, not a function. Tell me an offender. Tell me one of those vertical lines where there's an, where it hits twice. Yeah, right here. If you look at negative 3, right here, that's negative three. It hits one, two, three. So it really, it really messes it up. So at x of negative three is one place where it is, where it fails the vertical line test. Very good. All right. Jordan, how about number six? Yes or no? Okay. So tell me where, if you say no, tell me where does it hit it twice? Yep. It's a, it, it is a function because nowhere does it or uh, does it fail that vertical line test? Okay, Olivia, how about number seven? Whoa. There we go. Perfect. Number seven. Is it a function or not? Yes, it's a function. Good. Nowhere, if I draw a line, right, nowhere does it come back and hit itself again. Okay, uh, Jocelyn, how about number eight? Function or no? Okay, tell me an offender. Perfect. Right here, right? It hits boom, boom. That's perfect. Good. All right. Um, Paul, how about this diagram? Try to make it bigger here. <laughs> I never know what pretty figure I'm going to get. All right. Number one there. Is it a function? Yes or no? Okay. Tell me an offender. Good. All right. There's your cheat and eight. Going out with four and nine. All right. Um, Peyton, how about number two? Is it a function? Yes or no? Okay. Tell me an offender. Good. X of three. Very good. Andrew, back to you. Is number three a function? Yes or no? No. Offender? Four. Good. Uh, Braden, how about number four? It's a function. What about this? Why doesn't that matter? Because it's a why. Wives can do whatever they want. It's kind of like wives, right? We can do whatever we want. It's fine. Wives can do whatever they want. So that does not matter at all. That does not hurt our function test at all. All right. Um, Kinsley, how about number five? Is it a function? Okay. Again, why doesn't this matter? Because it's a why. Wives can do whatever they want, right? All right. How about number six? Brooklyn, is that a function? Hmm? What do you think? Okay, yes, it's a function. Right? None of the X's go out to more than one, so we're good. Lexi, how about number seven? Function? Yes. And Emma Kate, how about number eight? Function? Yes. All right. That's it for day one. Day one, once you get the terminology down and you learn how to find those cheat nexus, day one is really easy. If you're at home virtually, uh, click on the assignment and then click on the can load Cami button and do all your work on Cami. Show me all your work and then submit it. And then tomorrow there will be another video for Indicator 11 day two. Email me if you have any questions.